Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a one fabric wonder table runner. This is a pattern I've been working on recently and even though it's got these nice color bands, it's all made with just one fabric. Now we need a certain kind of fabric to get this effect in the table runner. You need something that's called ombre or variegated and that means it's got color change throughout the width. This one starts out as green and then it goes to that nice turquoise and then it gets really light. That is a batik. Batiks work really well for this style runner. This is a printed fabric, again, going from really dark blue down to light. Here's some other batiks, nice shades of blue and you've got good color change between the dark and light. There's a good purple one. This one will also work. It's ombre and it goes into different colors, orange to red to purple. So any of this style fabric with dark to light will work perfect in this table runner. Now this is a free pattern. It's the first link right below the video that says free pattern. It's pretty simple to make the runner, but if you're going to make it at home, you might want to have that pattern to refer to. So we're going to need two yards of the variegated fabric. It's always a good idea to iron up the fabric before you cut so everything's nice and flat and we get accurate pieces. Now I'm going to split the fabric right along the fold here. So I'm just going to put my scissors in and cut all the way down here. Now I'm going to take the top half off and I'm going to flip this bottom half so it's right side up. Lay it out nice and flat. Now we want to put these two halves right sides together. So this one is going from light to dark. And I'm going to take this fabric and I'm also going to put it light to dark, right sides together, and lay them all out nice and flat. Now this is all going to get cut into four inch squares. So let's neaten this up here and make all our cuts. Once you have five strips cut, you can just move the rest of your fabric out of the way. And now we can make our cross cuts to get our squares. And then we'll repeat this procedure with the rest of the fabric so that it's all cut into four inch squares. Now before you move your squares, there's a step you can do that will save you a lot of time. These are all going to get marked along the diagonal on the back. So you can do it individually like this. I'm going to use a light pencil line. But if you leave them in place, you can do more than one at a time. So I'm just putting my ruler right from tip to tip to tip. And I can draw these two all at once. And then I can draw three at once. So now I've got all these squares and they're all drawn on. And I'm just going to keep going till I've got lines on the back of all of these squares. There, now because we laid all of these right sides together, light to dark, we are ready to take them right over to the sewing machine. So let me show you what we're going to do with these. We are going to stitch on both sides of our drawn line. So I'm just going to go a quarter inch away, which is how wide my presser foot is. I'm going to stitch down one side. Flip it around and then stitch down the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of my squares. Now we're just going to cut right along that drawn line. And I like to use my blade and my rotary cutter here. And now we've got two half square triangles. Now we're gonna to wanna to iron these. So I'm gonna to wanna to take the lighter fabric, the lighter color piece, and put it down on the ironing board. 
And that is because when we open this, the seam allowance will then end up heading towards the darker fabric, which is always a good idea. So kind of finger press it open so that seam stays straight. Use a dry iron, then a little bit of steam. And the last thing we want to do is these little bits that are sticking off, they call them dog ears. You want to trim those off. So just take your scissors and cut that off. Once you have all of your fabric cut and stitched up into blocks, you're going to have 108 of them. So to lay this out, each block has half light and half dark. But some of the blocks have a really dark purple, like that's kind of a lighter purple. So I'm going to pick some that are really dark, like these ones here, and I'm going to put those in the very center of the runner because I think that's going to make a good dark focal point. Then I'm going to add, start building around here, and I'm going to be making stripes or bands of color. So I've got purple in the center. Now I'm putting a light thing all around it. And I'm going to keep building till I have 36 blocks in this center section here. So the farther away I get from the center, I'm not really worried about what shade of purple I've got here. I don't really worry about the dark how dark that one is. I just want the color band showing. That's the center block of the runner. It's a six by six block pattern and you can see those bands of color very clearly. Now I'm just going to repeat one more of these on the right and the only thing I did different with this section is I made the center a little bit lighter and I have a little more pink here where this is a little bit bluer. And now I'm going to repeat this section over here. So there's the whole runner laid out. Now to sew it together, it's very easy. I'm going to make rows. So I'll make the first row and press all the seam allowances up. Then make the second row, press the seam allowances down and keep making rows, and once they're all done, we will stitch them together. There's no special matching or anything. It'll be really easy to get the whole top done. I've got the whole top done here, and now we're ready to put this together and get it quilted. Now I've picked out a backing that doesn't look anything like the top. The colors are similar, but if we use this on the back, we will get two different looks out of our runner. So we could flip it over and have this side showing. Now I've got a yard here and it's not long enough for the runner. So I'm going to cut it straight here. And I'm going to split it along the fold. And then I'm going to stitch it, stitch it back together on those edges so I've got one long skinny piece that is more like the shape of our runner top. Now we're ready to make our quilt sandwich. To make the quilt sandwich, we're going to put our back right side down and then we're going to put the batting on top of it. Now I'm just using a scrap from one of my quilts. So this is Hobbs batting. It's 80% cotton and 20% polyester. And I'm going to lay that on there nice and flat. And then I'm going to put the patchwork top right sides up, right side up. Make sure that we've got it with some backing all the way around the edge, which I do. Smooth it out. And then I'm going to put a lot of pins all around the edges and in the top. The first thing I'm going to do is stitch all the way around the outside, just so that all three layers are anchored together. And I'm just gonna use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going very close to the edge.
now I'm ready to start quilting the runner. My machine does not have the ability to drop the feed dog. I don't have a walking foot or anything. So I want to do something that is pretty simple. And I think I'm going to go in the ditch, which is right in the seam here, along all of these color changes. So that's great because I'm going to end up stitching on the diagonal only. And that's the easiest way to quilt on your regular machine because the fabrics give a little bit on the diagonal and it's going to keep me from having the back feed in too fast or the top and, and making little excess where I have to have tucks. So here's all I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch with my needle right where that seam is. So we call it in the ditch, but honestly, if you are near the ditch, that's going to be close enough. All right, it's all quilted up. Now I'm just going to trim off the extra batting and backing. I'm going to trim it even with that raw edge there all the way around the edges. Then we're ready to work on the binding. Now for the binding, I'm going to use the same fabric that I used for the patchwork. So this is that ombre fabric. And I'm going to cut it into two and a half inch strips. And then I'm going to sew those strips into one long piece. And I'm going to sew them with the light ends together. And then I'm gonna sew them with the dark ends together. Let me show you what I mean here. So when, when these are in strips, I don't want a big color change where I sew them together. So I'm going to, I'm gonna sew this piece here onto the light side of this one here. And then for when I come to the next piece, when it's dark, I'm gonna sew that onto the dark edge. That way I won't get any abrupt color changes when I put the binding on. So I'm gonna stitch these together and get them ready and then I'll show you how I put them onto the table runner. So all the pieces are stitched into one long strip and then I ironed that strip in half, wrong sides together, all the way around, all the way down. Now I'm going to start kind of in the middle of one side here. I'm just going to place the raw edges against the raw edges of the quilt and I'm going to start stitching about six inches. I'm going to leave about six inches here. I'm going to use a quarter inch seam. I'm stitching a quarter inch from all those edges, lining everything up and stitching down to the corner. Now I'm coming to the corner here. I'm going to want to stitch to, to a quarter inch from the edge. I'm just gonna stick that pin in there so I know where a quarter inch is. And I'm gonna stitch down. I'll take the pin out before I get to it, but at least I know where I'm going, which is right there. And I'm going to, you might have to, you know, hand turn your flywheel so you get a few stitches in. I'm gonna stop and then back tack there. And I'm gonna take it off the machine and snip those threads. Now I'm going to pivot my quilt or my table runner and I'm going to take the binding and I'm going to fold it so that this, nine, this 45 degree angle is pointing right towards that corner. Then I'm going to fold it again so that this fold here is even with those raw edges. And that means this raw edge is also all lined up on this side here. So basically what we get is a little flap that will turn both ways. And you can even go like this so that you can get a little crease in it. So I can kind of show you with my pin. I've got a little crease right along that angle there. And right where this seam is underneath there, and a quarter inch from here, that's where we want to start stitching, which is right there. So I'm just going to stick a pin in, move these out of the way, and I'm going to put my needle right down where that pin is, just by hand, just by hand. Then I'm going to take the pin out, and I'm going to take a few stitches forward, then back tack, and then keep stitching. Now I've got all four corners done. I'm all the way around and I'm coming right back to where I started here. So I'm going to stop several inches short of this 
and I'm just going to smooth this out and then smooth this down right on top of it and I'm going to cut off everything but a half inch extra here so I'm gonna cut this right here so we've got an extra half inch there and I'm going to stitch these together with a quarter inch seam and then it will lay nice and flat and all we have to do is stitch that last little bit. So just put these right sides together and stitch with a quarter inch seam. And I like to press this seam open. I press all the seams open on my binding. So I'm just going to finger press it, refold it, lay it nice and flat on there, and stitch this last little bit. Now all we have to do is turn this binding to the back side, and we're going to stitch in the ditch here and that will end up stitching this very close to the edge. Now to make it easy to do that I'm going to open this up and finger press it hard all the way around here. So I'm using the pad of my finger. You can use your fingernail if you like but this is pulling it away and pressing and I'm going to go all the way around. So now just turn the batting over the edge of the runner or your quilt to the back and stitch right in the ditch. So I'm going to turn it over and stitch just an inch or two at a time and keep turning and stitching. And if you look at it on the back side here, see it's making a nice neat stitch right along the edge there. So a few inches before the corner you want to stop and we are going to turn this over this second side here and we're going to make sure it's folded right up against that raw the the edge of the quilt so I'm folding it all the way over and then this is going to make a 45 degree angle the fold there and then you see the edge there I'm going to fold it over that edge and this is my corner here. Now you can see it's not folded perfect. So I'm going to take a straight pin and I'm just going to put it in that fold and pull it out a little more. I'm not sticking it through the fabric. I'm just helping myself refold it so I get a nice 45 degree fold right there. And I'm going to hold on to it and stitch down to the corner and stop with the needle right in the corner there. Refold a few more inches of this right over that edge on that side, pivot around, and keep stitching. And then I'm just gonna continue on, folding over to the back side and stitching in the ditch. So here's that corner. We've got a nice fold that's right going to the corner, right from here to the corner. Nice 45 degree angle. And the same thing on the back. So I'm just going to continue on, do all the corners like that, and go all the way around the table runner. I'm so happy with how the runner turned out. The binding in that ombre ended up, not on purpose, with the darker parts on both of the short ends of the runner and it frames it very nicely. And I really like how it changes color all the way around here. Now I quilted it just in the ditch along these color changes. So the easiest way to do this is to start at one end. So I started way down here and I went along this line, then all the way along this line, all the way along here. And that took me all the way to the other end and then I just pivoted and went back and that got most of the quilting done. All I had to do after that was these little sections around the edges and then when those were all done there's just two circles here because on something even though it's fairly small you don't want to have to be turning it a lot of times uh, underneath your home sewing machine because it's really hard and it can 
get tangled up in there. Now you can see that quilting from the back side here looks really good from this side and the binding again, it matches the print here. The colors look really good with all those different color shades. It turned out 19 inches by 58. So it's a really good size for a bigger table, even a smaller table. It would also make a really nice wall hanging. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the One Fabric Wonder Table Runner. Now we're gonna have a giveaway. This is called Double Dipping. Now we did a video showing how to make this quilt and it's got this really colorful quilting on it which gives it almost like a velvet look. It's got a nice batik on the back side and this would make a really nice wall hanging or a nice quilt to put on the edge of your couch, a nice picnic blanket. And it's very, very easy to enter the giveaway. All you have to do is click that link right below the video that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name and you might be the next lucky winner. Now, if you like our videos and you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.